President Biden delivering remarks on the war in Ukraine this morning. He's now requesting another $33 billion in additional military aid. Chief White House correspondent James Rosen joins us live from the front lawn. James. Bob, good afternoon. The president requesting of Congress $33 billion for additional military assistance to Ukraine, for financial assistance, and also humanitarian relief. It was, by all accounts, a staggering number uh, for to be absorbed both uh, by the people on Capitol Hill and the people around the country, the taxpayers. Here's how the president justified it. The cost of this fight uh, is not cheap, but caving to aggression is going to be more costly if we allow it to happen. We either back Ukrainian people as they defend their country, or we stand by as the Russians continue their atrocities and aggression in Ukraine. Every day, every day, the Ukrainians pay for the price, with their, and the price they pay is with their lives for this fight. So we need to contribute arms, funding, ammunition, and the economic support to make their courage and sacrifice have purpose. $33 billion, as Politico noted just a short time ago, that's more than half of what the president has requested for the annual budget of the entire State Department and USAID put together. Uh, it comes at a time, of course, when the GDP numbers have been disappointing, released by the Commerce Department today. I may have misstated this in my previous appearances on the channel today, so forgive me for that. Uh, the latest numbers show that the size of our economy shrank uh, over the year-to-year -year period uh, by 1.4 percent. Uh, that followed growth in the last quarter uh, of 2021 of 6.9 percent. So the economy is beginning to slow down. Uh, this is a time when the president is finding it difficult to negotiate even with members of his own party about an additional domestic spending package that could possibly be enacted before the midterm elections. Uh, when he's getting finding it difficult to get his own members of his own party to pony up 10 million more dollars, 10 billion more dollars for COVID funding. Uh, so how this request for $33 billion will play into that kind of atmosphere is remarkable. Of course, the security atmosphere uh, appears to be worsening. President Putin of Russia is committed to this offensive, and he sounded more alarming rhetoric yesterday. If someone intends to intervene in the ongoing events from the outside and create strategic threats for Russia that are unacceptable to us, they should know that our retaliatory strikes will be lightning fast. We have all the tools for this, things no one else can boast of having now. And we will not boast. We will use them if necessary. And I want everyone to know that. We have made all the decisions on this matter. And those remarks from President Putin coming shortly after his foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, again warned the U.S. and the allies not to underestimate the ability of this conflict to escalate into a nuclear conflict against these, uh, this edifice of threat from the Kremlin. Uh, President Biden, in his remarks today, sought to project strength. But there was one memorable stumble that went on for a very long period of time and projected anything but. Let's watch that now. I'm also sending to Congress a comprehensive package of, uh, that will enhance our underlying effort to accommodate the Russian oligarchs uh, and make sure we take their, take their, their ill-begotten gains. <laughs> We're going to accommodate them. We're going to seize their yachts their luxury homes and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, yeah. Kleptocracy. And klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> but these are bad guys. There were cringe-worthy uh, moments when President Trump spoke publicly, many of them for different reasons. But this st uh, stumble by President Biden uh, the sheer length of the gaffe, uh, his utter befuddlement at points during it, uh, seemed unusual, in fact, uh, perhaps unique in the annals of the modern presidency. I don't remember President Reagan appearing that untethered from the moment, or any modern president, really. Um, but uh, again, uh, President Biden seeking to rally the Congress at this moment of peril for Ukraine with a staggering request for $33 billion in security, financial, and humanitarian aid. Uh, James, that is striking what you just showed. Um, is there talk around the world? Are other people talking about this? Uh, th let's be frank. A lot of the media uh, has defended this president, uh, even when he's had uh, moments that uh, were not completely lucid. Uh, but 
that there was something about that one that did go beyond, like you said, in, in length and focus, is something we haven't seen before. As a longtime senator, as vice president, as a candidate on various occasions, Joe was after uh, seeing this play out amongst reporters on the North Lawn uh, when we were all assembled here waiting to report on the, uh, the conclusion of his remarks, was which genius in the White House speechwriting team decided it would be a good idea to put the word kleptocracy in President Biden's remarks. Um, I'm sure there will be some additional discussion of that within the halls of the White House. Uh, but for the time being, it, it did not serve uh, this president's objectives of projecting strength at this time when he's trying to rally the Congress and the American taxpayers. Yeah, all of us have those moments. Uh, I, I certainly do. You, you usually try to get out of them and move along, and that w was less than graceful. Uh, and I think something that uh, will be talked about, as you said, because, James, I know you've watched presidents for many years, and uh, this stood out to you. If it stood out to you, it should stand out to everybody else. Thank you so much.